My name is Swin and you're watching Pulse episode 31. In the future episodes I'm going to try and put a little bit of a description of what I'm actually going to talk about in the rest of the episode in this little start bit, but today I was clearly unprepared. So let's check out the news. It is time, friends, for the world to shatter. Yes indeed, the shattering has occurred and Azeroth has been torn asunder by the might of Deathwing. Did you manage to do all you wanted to do and see all you wanted to see? Did you say your goodbyes and brace for change? I sure hope you have because I definitely didn't. Blizzard has a nice rundown of everything that happened in the Shatterin as well as all the patch notes up on their new World of Warcraft community site. So instead of mentioning every single little change that happened in patch 4.0.3a, I've got a nice list here that covers all the yays and nays of the Shattering. So firstly what's not in the Shattering? Goblins and Worgens cannot be created yet. Their starting zones are not yet accessible. Archaeology cannot yet be trained or leveled. Professions past level 450 are not yet unlocked. Guild leveling, guild achievements and guild reputation are not yet live. You can't fly in the old world or purchase the flying skill just yet. You can also not access the new level 80 plus zones. So what did happen in the Shattering? The portals in Dalaran and Shatrath have been removed and in their places you can find class trainers and auction houses. New class and race combinations, new starting zones for Troll and Gnome, as well as various other zone changes, as you may well know. The new Cataclysm cinematic is in the game, the login screen, music and loading screens. City Quartermasters with Rep Tabards where you can actually get a nice Goblin Trike right now as well as a fully working Deathy plus many other bug fixes. Druids, Paladins, Priests and Shamans have had their talents reset. As you can expect quite a few balance changes have been made and the game is pretty much toned for level 85 now so things might be a bit weird at level 80. Experience required to level from level 71 to 80, that's the Wrath of the Lich King content, is now reduced by 20%. There are new hunter pets including a monkey, fox, dog and beetle as well as many other changes and updates to existing skins. Zulgarab is now a leveling zone and as you can expect the mounts are gone. Another little piece of information is that apparently our rested XP will be reset once Cataclysm hits so don't bother logging out in the inn, it's not gonna matter. So also tying in with these changes, Blizzard recently responded to the many, many questions and queries about the portals being removed from Dalaran and Shatrath. In short, they say they were removed because they don't want you to hearth back to an old city from a previous expansion that you've already outgrown just to have instant travel to anywhere across the world. They want you to appreciate the newly rebuilt cities. Also, they say, as I mentioned before, that because there are class trainers and auction houses in Dalaran and Shatrath, it shouldn't be too much of a problem now. Lastly, they say that once players are able to fly in Azeroth, then the lack of the portals won't really be a big deal to them. I mean, let's face it, who doesn't want to see the beautiful new world they've crafted for us? So as I mentioned, the shattering has happened, the world has changed, but this momentous event didn't come without its hitches. Below you can find a list from Blizzard, which has been updated pretty much daily right now, of all the issues that they've fixed and are currently still working on in patch 4.0.3a. They say that some of the changes may only take place the next time the server restarts, but it won't be too long, don't worry. So as always, it's great to see Blizzard on the ball and keeping things in check. You can find the full list below and be careful, it's pretty long. There are a bunch of unlockables on the World of Warcraft Darkmoon Fair Find Your Fortune website that have been um, unlocked. As of recording this, the Horde already has a 4% lead on the Alliance. They are currently sitting on 46% where the Alliance is on 42%. Will the Alliance be able to catch up in the coming days? Who knows. The first two unlockables were two amazing wallpapers titled Jailer of the Damned and Pride of the Horde with their respective descriptions. They're really cool and you should definitely check them out. After that we were treated with an interview with lead level designer Jesse McCree as he talks about the Goblin and Worgen starting zones. You can also read an interview with Gary Plattner, the lead environment designer on World of Warcraft where he talks about the crafting of the world of Warcraft. MMO Champion, being their brilliant selves, have also transcribed these for us already. So you can find the transcriptions below or at MMO Champion as well as links to the videos. After that, two exciting excerpts from The Shattering, Prelude to Cataclysm by Christy Golden were released. The Horde version is titled The Blind Seer and the Alliance version Peace No More. 
Finally, at 40%, we were treated to two new pieces of music, the Horde version titled Drums of War and the Alliance titled A Call to Arms. They're both pretty epic and you can find all of the stuff that I just mentioned over at the new Darkmoon Fair website. I'll be linking that below for all of you. Blizzard have started up a pretty cool promotion for all the would-be World of Warcraft players in Europe. I gotta say, it really, really is a steal. The prices on all the World of Warcraft games, obviously excluding Cataclysm, have been reduced to next to nothing. Classic World of Warcraft, 5 euro. Burning Crusade, 5 euro. And Wrath of the Lich King, only 10 euro. So if you were thinking of starting World of Warcraft up, then I think this is as good a reason as any to do it, because that's a really good deal. You can read more about that over at the promotion page, which I have linked below. Pilgrim's Bounty has started on the live World of Warcraft servers and is nearing its end already. I'm sorry, I am a bit late in reporting this, but I didn't really have time to release a video before now. So everyone is hard at work doing those achievements, doing some cooking and just sharing the love of Thanksgiving. The festivities actually started this past Sunday, the 21st of November, and they are carrying on all the way till this upcoming Saturday, the 27th of November. So if you want to try your hand at cooking, hunting turkeys, getting those achievements done, or many other things, then you should definitely check this one out. I have to point out though that this world event does make it extremely easy to level cooking, so if you hadn't had time till now, this is the best chance you have all year long. In some smaller news, Cody from over at World of Raids and MMO Champion has a nice interview up with Tom Chilton. They mostly talk about patch 4.0.3a and the changes that have been made to the world, so it's definitely worth the read if you're playing right now. You can check that out below. You can also watch a video below that features World of Warcraft being played on an iPad, and I have to say it actually runs pretty well and looks pretty decent. It's all done using the Every Air application from Panda Elf. And you can read more about all of that and see the video below. Jinx just recently released their new collection of Cataclysm themed goodies. The new collection includes hoodies, t-shirts and button-up shirts, so if you want to get your wow on in style, then you should probably check it out. Blizzard Entertainment and DC Comics are proud to announce the newest miniseries in the World of Warcraft comic collection, World of Warcraft Curse of the Worgen. You can now purchase Curse of the Worgen online or in select stores around the world, so if you want to read more about that and all the other pieces of news that I just mentioned, then, um, well, I guess you do know where to look by now. Lastly, here in the World of Warcraft news, it's a sad, sad day for the World of Warcraft Cataclysm Beta testers. Yes, the Cataclysm Beta has gone down, but I guess now that the Shattering is live, we won't miss it quite as much. Blizzard took a moment to thank everyone that participated and let us know that they helped in fixing over 700 unique bugs throughout the Beta. That's a lot of bugs and that's very impressive. Kudos to all the Beta testers out there that actually helped out. So with that, let's leave the World of Warcraft news behind and head on over to the Diablo news. The World of Warcraft community site... Uh, yes, I just started the Diablo news with that. Oh no, not a good start, but it does get better. They've posted a pretty long email from Christina Estrada. So if you don't know who she is, she actually won the BlizzCon 2010 costume contest for her portrayal of the female monk. In the email she talks about her cosplay experience at BlizzCon, the effort that went into making her costume and the crazy costume she wore at last year's BlizzCon. It really is pretty inspirational and the post contained in the email has quite a lot of really amazing pictures in it as well, so you can check out how she actually made the costume from scratch. So you can read the email from our lovely female monk below, as well as check those photos out. Enjoy. Steel Series are continuing their support of all things Blizzard. This time they've released an amazing new Diablo 3 themed mouse pad. Their incredibly popular QCK mouse pad has now been spiced up with a bit of Diablo 3 barbarian goodness. So if you want the amazing performance that Steel Series products always provide, combined with the fury of the barbarian, then I guess this one's for you, and you can find out more at steelseries.com or in the links below. Jay Wilson has been off in Asia doing some Diablo 3 promotion, and during his interviews that he had there, he actually spoke a bit about the console positions they're trying to fill right now. Now, while there isn't any new information here, this is the first time that we see the developers actually talking about it. So in the interviews, he spoke a bit about the positions they're trying to hire and the conversion process of Diablo 3 onto consoles. After the reveal of the Diablo 3 poker set at BlizzCon this year, there wasn't really very much more information released about it. Until now, that is. The set comes in a pretty bulky and shiny carrying case and features fully customized dice, 
and chips. The best part of the entire set though is the deck of cards, which is entirely Diablo 3 themed. There are some amazing pieces of artwork on those cards and some new pieces of concept art that we've not actually seen before and as you can expect, that definitely got people talking. So if you want to read more about the poker set and the crazy conspiracy theories and mysteries surrounding it, then you can do that over at Diablo INC Gamers or just check the links below. Time for the many, many Diablo 3 smalls from the past couple of days. The Diablo Twitter account has been really busy and once again thanks to Diablo INC Gamers for keeping track of all of it. There were some pretty entertaining, on the verge of nasty interactions between the Diablo 3 Twitter account and a pretty passionate fan. He actually tries to bully information out of them and accuses them of many things, so I'm not going to mention all of that here, you can find that below. Currently only the Barbarian and Monk can dual wield melee weapons and the Demon Hunter can dual wield crossbows. The maximum skill level in Diablo 3 is 20. What ways are they to customize stats in Diablo 3 at the moment? Gems, charms, traits, enchants and items obviously. Weapons won't be nearly as customizable, in looks at least, as armor in Diablo 3. Why haven't you changed Turiel's wings on the Diablo 3 website again? Blizzard replied by saying, why would we change them? As usual, thanks a lot to Diablo INC Gamers and DiabloFans.com for their great and always up-to-date Diablo news. That's all the Diablo and Warcraft news I've managed to collect over the past couple of days, so I guess if you want more you're just gonna have to subscribe, yes, I just said that, and wait for the next episode. Thanks to everyone watching and thanks to those guys out there that are actually helping me promote the show. You know who you are. It really, really does mean a lot to me. I appreciate every single little bit that you guys do. So have a great weekend and I'll see you again soon. Or I'll get the news out there again soon. Or whatever. Happy... Bye.